I think I've finally done it right this time. Oh, hello, uh, happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to I the- I think I've finally done it right this no, time. Uh, of I take that back. <laughs> every time, every time. Okay, let's, I'm, let's get underway with this. Um, this show. Uh, I'm going to bring on Maggie of England. We're going to get started. Um, we're pretty excited about today's show. Um, okay, so I'm presenting Maggie of England. Hey, Hi, Maggie. everyone. <laughs> Hi, Robin. Happy Sunday. Happy I'm Sunday. Folks. I thought I'd be myself today. Goes down to Darren and say, do you like my hair? And he says, you look like you've got an egghead. I said, pardon? <laughs> he said, you look like you've got an egghead. I promptly goes into the kitchen to make him a coffee. I had in my hand the backer he asked for from upstairs. So I went back in, aimed, fired, and smacked him right between <laughs> Now, I can't aim for shite. <laughs> I really can't. He said, what did you do that for? I said, you know, I can't aim for shite. God did that. I'm just making him a coffee. So that's our intro for this week. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go on, because we're doing the cat theme this week and we've got a fantastic guest in the background it's just an old gypsy folklore about cats and it's the gypsy tells of the cat and the hare once the cat went to see her cousin the hare and there came a hunter and the cat scrambled up the hill further up up a tree and there she found a bird's nest. But the hare ran down the hill, far down into the country. Bad luck sends poor man further down, but it causes a great man to rise still more. And I believe we're all rising above whatever's going on at the moment. And I, me and Robin have been talking about it. We praise it at the moment because it's making us shine in our own little way. Much love, everybody. Ah, uh, Maggie, thank you so much for that. Okay, you guys, anyone new here? Maggie uh, lately has been showing up on the Sunday show in costume <laughs> uh, with props and wigs and stuff. And, and so she, she uh, cleaned up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had to. We've got special guests now. <laughs> I know no more clown noses or funny glasses or anything. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to discount any of that. <laughs> okay. So, Maggie, we're going to bring on our guest for this week. His name is Kyle Cassidy. And we have known each other for gosh, many years on the internet. I used to follow his blog. It, it was, uh, if you can't be witty, at least be bombastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I followed that for years and, and then came Facebook. And I, uh, I came on in 2008, 2009, and he had a Facebook. So I went and started following him there. And we chatted a, a little bit, you know, comments over, over the years. Uh, and, but I followed his his uh, life and his process and his life with his cat, Roswell. Um, uh, he's also a long distance runner. Um, he is not only a very passionate and a gifted photographer, but, you know, he's a husband. He's uh, uh, just this creative. And uh, I, I'm going to ask him how many medals he has from all of those long distance runs because he's uh, done his marathons dressed as I think uh, George Washington wow. in full costume. You know, he'll correct me if I'm, I'm off with that. <laughs> but uh, 
interesting, delightful man. I'm proud to call him an, an acquaintance on YouTube. I'm going to bring him on. Kyle Cassidy, welcome to the Granny Show. Thanks uh, for having me. It's great to be here. Well, yay. What? I know. I'm really, so I'm really looking forward to your story. I really can't wait for you to get into it all. Oh, I've thank had, you. Yeah. I've had bits and bobs from Robin and what she sent me links. And I think you're amazing, to be uh, fair. Yeah. I know you're a good man. Uh, uh, yeah, he, he's a fine man. You know, uh, we can't overlook that. He's a fine man. He's a, a, a nice man. He's a kind man. Okay, I'm, I'm through buttering you up, Kyle. You're going to slide off your chair. Uh, <laughs> but could you, would you start out, do you want to start out by telling your story about Roswell, your life with Roswell? Oh, sure. I guess, um, uh, it's, you know, it's, I don't think it's a unique story. I think lots of people have very similar stories. Um, you know, it's just, I was thinking about this today that, um, John Lennon said the love that you take is equal to the love that you make. And I think that's especially mm -hmm. true with animals and, you know, it's, I just put a lot of love into this animal and it sort of, uh, you know, it, it stayed there and it was a, a ball of love that kept giving back. And I think that, you know, it's a universal story. Roswell's not special. Um, I but, think they're all special, but everybody's relationship with, you know, with their animal is, is unique and powerful. And Roswell was a kitten we found in 2006 and she was blind at the time her eyes were swollen shut she had an infection and it, at the time i was just thinking well we'll find a home for this cat you know we'll catch it we did catch it and uh she was feral at the time so uh, we had, you had to chase her to catch her and once we got her in the house it was uh difficult to get her to the vet and uh, they said, oh, she's got this eye infection, will probably go away, but you need to medicate her every day. So we would chase her through the house and throw a towel over top of her. And she would howl and spit and hiss and uh, we would wrap her up like a burrito in the towel and put the, the medication on her eyes. And, you know, while that was happening, she started to change, you know, and she started to realize that people maybe weren't so bad and that I wasn't going to eat her. And um, I was still trying to find a home for her at the time. She was cute. So I was posting lots of pictures of her to my blog saying, Hey, don't you want this kitten? It's now not blind anymore. And it now likes to be petted. And uh, then it had a seizure, a terrible seizure. Um, and I raced it to the vet hospital and I really thought she was going to die. And they took the cat at the hospital and they said, well, it might not live through the night. Um, you might just want to euthanize it. And I was like, I, like how am I going to make this decision? And I said to the vet, well, what would you do? And he, he wouldn't tell me. And I pressed and pressed and, and eventually he said, well, I get a discount at the hospital, but if it were my cat, I would try giving it antibiotics, but it will be expensive. And I was like, well then try giving it antibiotics. And, you know, I called the next day and they said, well, your cat made it through the night, but might die tomorrow. And this went on for a week. This cat was oh. in, in the ICU. And I kept updating my blog about it. And then at the end of a week, they called me up and they said, your cat's like 100% better. You can come get her. And when I got there, I said, how much is it? And they said, well, people have been calling all day and like, contributing ten dollars and twenty dollars and <laughs> so the internet paid this cat's twelve hundred dollar medical bill and i was like well and somebody said well i guess it's your cat now and i was like well i guess it is um after having been through this like really <laughs> grueling and traumatic experience together and then i stopped trying to find a home for her because i realized she was home yeah. and so mm -hmm. we we've been paying back or trying to pay back that generosity from the internet over the last uh, 13 years. She, she died early this year in uh, January, I think, but um, 
still trying to to pass along that human kindness that we got from you know all those hundreds of people who just chipped in because they wanted to be good and it was a wonderful experience for me to realize that people are so good and uh and the internet uh, the internet can be lovely yeah. and kind and uh connected um you know you just have to watch out for the creeps uh, <laughs> uh, but you know you know we talked earlier i've made some solid friendships on the internet i have discovered lovely lovely people you you know after you've had to kiss a lot of frogs uh, <laughs> but yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, but but uh, there were such stories of Roswell, Kyle, uh, especially. Can you? Okay, continue with your story about Roswell. <laughs> well, um, so at the time I was a little lost in my in my own life, um, and I was trying to think of like what could I do to like be, you know, more useful or a better person, or you know, how can I improve who I am? And I decided I was gonna start learning how to cook. That just seemed like something that I could do because I was by myself. And Roswell was a constant companion uh, while I was figuring out how to cook. And I would invariably post pictures of her um, along with whatever food I was trying to make to my blog. And um, people started saying, oh, this, you know, this should be a cookbook. And I kept, and I did say, and I, th I think I put up a website called Cooking with Roswell, mm. maybe, maybe 10 years ago <laughs> saying, yeah. saying, hey, um, I might do this at some point. Um, you can click here to send me encouragement and people would send me encouragement. And I worked on it kind of half heartedly. And um, then when she got, she got sick in uh, November of, 2018 yeah um she was uh, also she was also diabetic but um when she got sick they told me that she had cancer that they had found and she probably had 12 weeks to live and i thought well let's uh and then they said you know there's some treatments you can do and i was like well i don't really want to do that because she really hates being at the vet like this is the worst day of her life and i was like what i you know, I can't keep her from dying, but what I can do is make sure that she has good days left and that every day oh. that she has is the best day that she's ever had, you know, and as, as the guardian of an animal, I think the, the only thing you can't control them not dying really, but you can control how they die. Yeah. And so, so I decided that, you know, Every day was going to be better than the day before. Every day was going to be the best one. And then when a day came along that wasn't as good as the one before, then that was just going to be the last day. And we were going to do that for, you know, however much time we had. And I thought it was going to be 12 weeks at the time. And I posted to the blog saying, hey, you know, today is Roswell Day. And yeah. <laughs> I want to invite you all to celebrate Roswell Day. And then I would post that every day. It's like, hey, today is Roswell Day. Oh, my gosh. And so we would, you know, do something to to celebrate every day. And I invited people um, from around the world who had been following her story for 13 years to come visit her if they wanted. And people came from all over the world <laughs> to visit her and bring her food and sit with her. And we also had a, a writers in residence program where if you were working on a book, um, you could come to our house and you could have our living room and you could sit in front of the fireplace as long as you uh, let Roswell sit on your lap and <laughs> and pet her while you worked. So even times that we weren't able to be around all the time, um, we were able to let other people spend time with her. And in the end, she lived for more than a year. and. Yeah. Every one of those days was a very special day. Every day was Roswell <laughs> day. day. I, yeah. I checked in with you every single day. Every day was Roswell day. And she <laughs> she enjoyed her shipments of nori. She did. Yeah, that's her favorite food, seaweed. Uh, and people would just send her 
sheets and sheets and sheets of it. We we probably literally have a thousand sheets of nori in the kitchen right now that I need to figure out what we're going to do with. But she loved eating it, and there are some videos of her on the internet eating eating nori. nori. Yeah, yeah, crunch, 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 crunch. Yeah, yeah you can tell her delight. <laughs> oh. Cats are so expressive. You know, you can eat crunch, crunch, crunch. It was just wonderful. Yeah, Roswell days. What a beautiful story. I love it. I love it. And I I realized, you know, while I was doing that, that that story is universal. Because it's not about me and her, you know. It's about you and your cat and your dog and your rabbit and whatever. And it's about the relationship that you have with the animals that are in your life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so and maybe many people can't express it as eloquently as you have, <laughs> Kyle, uh, but the feelings are still there. The feelings are common, right. they're universal, but you know, Kyle has the voice uh, and his art uh, uh, and he speaks for so many people. Uh, yeah. yeah, boy, let's all room together next semester. We're bonded, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but I lost Midge in November and my mum bought me this. It said, oh, I love you, Teddy. Mm. It was 16 years, six, but when he was a puppy, he cut his teeth on it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's all chewed up. Oh, darling. Nice yeah. Memento. But he fell asleep in my arms in November. I, c I couldn't do it. My first experience with the vets, putting one of our family down, was Ebony, uh, a little chihuahua. All my pets have been rescued, always. Right. And um, we'd had her for years when we first had her. She was two years old before she barked. Oh. She didn't talk or anything. Um, but she's, she, she soon became the queen of the house. Um, and when we took her to the vets, I expected them to give her uh, some antibiotics. She got a cyst on one of her boobies. I mean, she was 18 years old, but I st she still had life in her, as far as I was concerned. And uh, we didn't have time to think, and the next minute they stuck an injection in her and she was gone. Oh, I would never, ever, ever have to go through that again. So Buster died in our home he saved my husband from alcoholism if he felt like he wanted to drink buster went with him a rescue then we had midge who he died in my arms in november we've all got the stories and he was a shit he was a sad person <laughs> he was a terrier and he was a sod what i do know is what some people say that they don't go to heaven, they're stuck in the 3D or whatever. No, they don't. No, they don't. And I don't care what anybody else says. They've got their place and you'll meet them again in some shape or form. They come back to you because they're part of you. It's your sole contract to be with them animals. I mean, now we've just got Gaia. I couldn't cope with. She's four-year-old rescue, <laughs> giant size, greyhound. But oh. they're our family. They're our family. Buster was a staffy. Everybody thought they were vicious dogs. I thought he was the most beautiful, precious dog we ever had. They've all been precious. That sounds wrong. We've all, they've all got their own characters. Each cat has got its own characters. I mean, we had sooties for God knows how long every year. Every woman, every childhood cat that died, another sooty come along. I thought, I must have thought our parents thought we were stupid. <laughs> they all got different characters, but they were all black cats. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I mean like that, but, you know, it's still raw. It, uh, yeah, we, we yeah the grief is real. 
Uh, yeah. And uh, and so are the memories, the memories, oh, wow. uh, you know, and you can call them up in an instant. Yeah. The, mem the memories that you have, they're like photographs in your head. You know, you can relive them. If you just sit there and stare, you can just relive all that stuff. And, you know, rescue, uh, uh, that term rescue, you know, it doesn't go one way. They rescue. No, us. no, because they rescue us as well in their um, own way in their own character like i said buster rescued darren yeah yeah I, yeah uh, and uh, i i know there's somebody in the chat uh bless him uh, he uh is fearful of small animals and you know he likes tigers and lions and bears and stuff but but it's really funny he's he he's in the chat and he says oh i'm gonna be lynched here uh <laughs> no Stephen Ronan, you are not going to be. It's still a family. This and this is class, uh, Stephen. You're auditing the class uh, on uh, uh, animal uh, bonding. You know, so uh, you will not be lynched in this classroom. I don't allow it. Uh, but Kyle, um, because of Roswell, and you know, you're you're do, is. It's a tribute to her. You're making a cookbook. Yes. Yeah. So finally it happened. Uh, yeah. Right after she died, I realized that, well, it's like right now or never. Um, you know, and, and I think one of the fears that we all have when somebody or somebody close to us dies is that we'll start to forget them. You know, my... Huh. My dad told me a while ago that he couldn't remember what his parents looked like uh, anymore, which is, you know, it's dreadfully sad to me. And I thought, well, I'm going to make this book and it's going to be a, a tribute to Roswell and it's going to be um, all of our memories together. But it's also going to be a tribute to the relationships that everybody has uh, with their with their own animals. And so I, I did a Kickstarter and it raised $13,000, which is um, certainly enough to make a, a cookbook out of. And I was able to hire a bunch of terrific artists uh, from around the world to make things for the Kickstarter. Um, and many of the, the items that, that come along with it celebrate the you know relationship through time that people and animals have had together and I was going to share some stuff in the chat but it looks like I can't share links to anything. So. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You know what I just need to do? I wait. Okay, I am Okay, so I have to click on you. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm so bad. Oh, no. This is so homegrown, Kyle. Thank you for being here on the, the Country <laughs> Granny's channel. Okay, you need to just do a quick comment. Oh, okay. I'll do a quick comment. So that I can click on you and make you a mod. <laughs> God, I embarrass myself every oh, damn week. See, you know all this technology now. Nearly. <laughs> uh, no, no. Of this, the granny show. Because we never have any idea what we're doing from one week to the next. <laughs> I know, Kyle. This I warned him. I said there are no show notes. There is no. <laughs> this is just um, out our butts. Sometimes I'm sorry, Kyle, but um, cat food. Okay, Reemsy in chat. Uh, it's it's for making vegan food. It, yeah, am I that is it's, that is correct. It's a vegan cookbook, <laughs> Reemsy, and Reemsy is a, a vegetarian. Um, and he's the one with the cat named Toby. Have you commented yet, Kyle? I have. I said hello. Okay, you haven't shown up. I see Miss Tree. Oh, there you are. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I have to wait. I am aces at this. No, that's not. <laughs> I am so sorry. Okay, this is me again. Okay, so I can do add moderator. Oh, for Christ's sake. Okay, now you're okay. Now you can post any link you would like in the chat. All right. Let, let's see how this works. These are boom. Some these are the fridge magnets. 
Oh yeah. Magnus Placetti Mage. He's a wonderful artist from Italy. And so these are pictures of Roswell with you know other people throughout history. The last one is me. I was very happy that she did that, but you can see I guess there's Marie Antoinette and a pharaoh and a pirate. And um, you know what I wanted to to celebrate was that this relationship, you know, that Roswell and I had is a relationship that other people have too, you know, and ours is special to us and everyone else's is special to them. And it's a terrific relationship that we've, you know, people and cats have had for a long time. For a long time. In fact, um, some friends right. of ours, uh, YouTube friends of ours did a show about the significance of cats down through history. Mm. Yeah. And their magic and their power and their properties and stuff. And, and so I said, I told her, I said, man, synchronicity, because Kyle Cassidy is coming on my show <laughs> uh, uh, about his cat. And she says, yeah, you, we high five. Yeah, synchro, baby. Um, <laughs> So, okay, Eileen Ebony says she can't see the links. Eileen, uh, Kyle is on Facebook. Uh, you can find him on Facebook. Um, um, did anybody else try the link? Can anyone, can anyone else see it? Maybe it's... Uh... Okay, can anybody see the link? No. What's up with that? Kyle hasn't even gone blue to have a wrench. So <laughs> I, I made him blue. StreamYard said... I made him blue. Um, you have to do it on um, YouTube. Okay, I, I, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I, I'm, I'm scrolling up. Oh, sh I didn't block you, did I? <laughs> <laughs> By accident? Oh, yeah. shit. Only on the grannies, folks. Remember this. Uh, only on this show will you see so many outtakes that aren't outtakes. Okay, there's Kyle Cassidy. It says that I. Oh, I think I have a. I think I have a wrench now. I think I have a wrench. Boy, talk about a lag. Well, I embarrassed myself. Um, okay, oh. there you are. Now you have a wrench. All right, and now I've lost the link. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. So this is. Oh yes, we have lunch. <laughs> this is a uh, the fridge magnets that Agnes made. Did that work? Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm looking. Boy, there's such a delay. I think it's because so many people are on the internet. Okay, there it is. Hey. Okay, there's your Facebook link. Yeah, uh, friend up with him on Facebook, you guys. You can keep up with his story. So, yeah, those are fridge oh, magnets. Holy crap. Oh, right. trillion, uh, Maggie, trillion stars is in the chat. Whoa. Oh, wow. Holy oh. crap. <laughs> I'm, Maggie, I'm peeing my pants a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we get so excited behind the scenes. Nobody ever knows. Mm. Everybody can't see. I don't know whether I can. So, Trillion Stars is my wonderful, talented actor wife uh, who has. That's uh, the fifth magnet photo on Facebook, everybody. <gasps> oh, Maggie, thank you. Maggie is on it. Oh, isn't that darling? Yeah. And is that Trillion Stars? On that um, no, Agnes Bal Balsetti, is it? She's the one who drew the magnets. Oh, wow. yeah, they're brilliant. Oh, how cool is that? How cool is that? Oh, and uh, I want to say that you know, because I go back with you guys, I know that Trillion Stars has a, an evil twin named Veronique. <laughs> she does. <laughs> That was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah uh, the mannequin? <laughs> yeah, when I was a kid, my, I don't know, I was like seven, 
and my parents had, uh, my dad was the manager at a fast food restaurant and uh, there were these two employees there, Kathy and Steve, and they were college students. And I thought, my sister and I thought they were the coolest people on earth, you know, cause they were probably like 20. <laughs> and we went over to their house for dinner once and they had a mannequin that they'd gotten out of a dumpster somewhere. And I was like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing I have ever seen. <laughs> when I am an adult, I will have a mannequin like Kathy and Steve cause I want to be that cool. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh we got this mannequin and it's just in the you know living room and um we <laughs> did a we did a sort of photo book project with um elizabeth bear who is a science fiction writer um if Ooh. i can find it where I took a bunch of photos of this mannequin and Trillion and uh, sent them to Elizabeth Bear, who wrote stories uh, about, here we go. Let's see. Let's see if I can post the blog entry from this. Yeah. You guys click on all those links. They're safe. Click on, um, click on all these links. I hope they're safe. Yeah, it's totally safe for work. <laughs> it's and, uh, yes, so you can see actually one of the one of the good pictures uh, in there. And Will Wheaton called it one of the coolest and most beautiful things he had ever seen. Will Wheaton? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Holy he's crap. We asked him to blur our... Uh, looking at it now, and I'm going, wow, we've got this man on our channel. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool. I'll, I'll show you a little behind-the-scenes coolness here. Let me... Okay. So I'm going to move. You'll see the how the sausage is made. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes uh, sausage making is gross. Okay, I'm so, going to uh, avert my eyes. No, no, no. This is my studio, and <laughs> this is where I do all my stuff. But um, down here in the archives, and every every artist has one of these. These are all of the extra copies of all of the things that I've done. So yeah. here are all the, the Veronique is visiting from Paris postcards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so each, each picture is a on a postcard and then Elizabeth Bear's story is on the back of it there. They'd make fantastic tarot cards. So the oh. the idea that we had for this is that you could take your postcard set and um, send it to people and you could send it to them out of order if you wanted each story is self-contained but they're numbered so that oh, wow. it does, does make uh, all the all the self-contained stories do tell a cohesive tale when they're put end to end. So the idea was that you could delight a friend of yours for 12 weeks or so by sending them this. Uh, oh, whoa, it's like a yeah, progressive, yeah. progressive yeah. dinner thing. Um, yeah, or like uh, those kits you can send away for, you know, as the story unravels. <laughs> right, the yeah. We might have been, maybe we invented that. <laughs> Maybe you did. Are you in the Rockstar Hotel? Right yes, now? this is the Rockstar Hotel. Yeah. Uh, could you tell a little story about the Rockstar Hotel? Sure. Um, uh, I have photographed a lot of bands, and um, in the you know the the touring band industry, music industry, very often the difference between being able to make a living from your music and having to get a day job is not having to get uh, a hotel every night or two hotels or three hotels, depending upon um, how big your band is. So one of the things that bands find that they really need is a place to stay. So uh, we fixed up this area of the house to sleep touring bands and oh, I'll show you some of that too, actually. So, uh, that's a great story. Yeah. So, yeah. If depending upon how successful your band is, you can sleep, you know, ten or twelve people down here. But here's some autographs on the wall from 
Wow. People who have stayed here. Yeah. No. Yeah, really cool. He drew us this picture. Yeah. And there's uh, some more. A question. Uh, did you photograph Nick Jonas? No. No, Reamsy. Yeah. Sorry. There's a uh, Melvin Van Peebles and there's a uh, Peter Sagal. So the Rockstar Hotel is where all the touring bands stay. That's really, really, I love your t shirt, by the way. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, MC Matt's made this. She's an artist in. Hey, brilliant. Uh, we had a. Oh, oh this is an, actually another interesting Roswell story. Um, I was working on a book called Where I Write, which I'm still working on, which is um, authors in the in their creative spaces. Yeah. And so I met lots of writers. And when they would have a, a book coming out, um, I would, you know, try and help them promo their book. And one of the things that we would do is have a contest. And let's see uh, if I can find one here. And so we would have a fan fiction contest where you could win um, a copy of the book. And what you would have to do is write some fan fiction based on the book that included Roswell in it. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's really, really cool. Yeah, and I wish I'd, I'd thought of this before so I could have one in here, um, but... Aaron Morgenstern, who wrote The Night Circus, did yeah. one with us. Um, let's see. That is so, he's Roswell's for eternity. He's <laughs> everywhere. It's beautiful. And uh, Sherry Priest uh, wrote a, a steampunk book called Bone Shaker. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah. And so when her book came out, Let's see. Oh, here we go. So Sherry Priest had this book called Bone Shaker coming out, and we did a giveaway contest. And you had to write a story that had various things from the book in it. So it had to have zombies, and it had to have <clears throat> uh, an airship and stuff like that. And then uh, I think the the journal or the entries are all in there too and then sherry read them all and and picked a winner but one of the people did as her entry this drawing of roswell <laughs> i love it i so, absolutely love it so the villain in the story has a steampunk mechanical hand so here's <laughs> roswell's steampunk mechanical hand and she's in an airship flying over uh, zombie infested Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> and let me see if I can find her website, MC Mats. Um, she still she sells these t shirts and she sells um, mugs. I have a mug. Cool. I've been trying to talk another internet friend into uh, making mugs, and he says, I will never make a mug. It's oh. it is not, dude. I, I buy mugs. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, it's uh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, see, um, yeah, and uh, okay, in the in the chat, you guys, Reemsy and Veronica May, no, uh, he's not a rock band photographer, he has done so, he do, he has done album covers. I have, he has photographed Amanda Palmer, the Dresden Dolls, and Neil Gaiman. Um, and I think they've stayed in the Rockstar Hotel, have they not? Yeah, in fact, here's Here's an Amanda Palmer album cover that I did. Uh, the album's actually smaller than this. You got the blown up version. <laughs> but so yeah, yeah. So when she stays here, she gets to look at the giant picture of herself. <laughs> How cool! Yeah, uh, they're stuck. Uh, she's stuck in New Zealand from still, from what I understand. Yep, and he's in the uh, Isle of Skye. Yeah, so they Skype and stuff, and oh, bless her heart, bless her heart. You know, her process, too. I follow her as well, and, you know, God, 
strong woman um, and yeah, another artist. You know, artists and gardeners, man. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're they're my people. Um, yeah. So, gosh, anything you old oh, Kyle. Okay, Kyle, my good man, you are also calling for people to step up a little bit during this uh, lockdown, and people have responded. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's something interesting and nice to talk about, I guess. Um, during the Roswell Day celebrations, um, when I was you know, inviting everybody on Facebook to celebrate Roswell Day, the, uh, the government shutdown happened in America, um, where the federal government shut down and they stopped doing uh, non-essential things. So they weren't processing a lot of paychecks and things like that. And uh, it caused a great deal of inconvenience for people because it happened relatively suddenly. And, um, you know, I was seeing a lot of people's stories about how they had run out of groceries. And uh, I think that people, people want to be good. They want to you know, they want to help other people. And sometimes it's just not the, the ways to do that aren't obvious. So on, uh, to celebrate Roswell day, uh, we facilitated people buying cat food for other people who needed cat food. Uh, so if you needed cat food, you could send a message somewhere and, uh, it would be connected anonymously with somebody who had, money or cat food um wow it would send you you know cat food dog food and actually groceries and stuff like that too so um you know that was something that i had learned from the internet that just you know people can use this tool to be nice to each other and help one another out and people helped me out so we were we me and roswell uh <laughs> i guess i was happy roswell really didn't care um <laughs> we were happy um to be able to facilitate people getting stuff that made their uh, lives easier during that time. And we're still doing the same thing during the pandemic right now. We're uh, helping people who have extra money and extra food get it to people who need it. And we're also, um, Trillian and I are encouraging uh, people on Facebook to uh, write letters to uh, healthcare workers so that uh, and just send them to the hospital so that people get some appreciation for you know the dangerous and hard work that they're doing right now. Yeah, but isn't that lovely that this groundswell is happening and it has been happening? Uh, uh, people reaching out to one another, you know, we're being uh, looking out for our neighbors. I, I know that's happening in my my real life here. Uh, everyone's sort of uh, being uh, it, from their introspection, perhaps. They're being kinder. I see people being kinder to one another. Of course, then there are those real jerks that you will call the cops if you're not wearing a mask. But then yeah. that's a whole other level of, you know, that's not my level. Uh, uh, but isn't this just lovely that in spite of it all, people are, are getting help and people are offering help. And I find that what a lovely, lovely result. You know, you, you boil this all down and you find some kindness at the bottom of the pot and um, humanity. And boy, I salute that. I honor that in every damn one of you. Um, uh, you know, boy, everybody, thank you for being kind. And, and thank you for, God, restoring faith in what humans are really capable of on yeah. this level. You know, I am so appreciative to know you guys. Um, thanks, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. Well. No, we started this just to make people smile. We have no intentions of even getting anywhere or even having a beautiful guest like yourself on. And we've had some beauties. We really have. People have really reached out and helped us both get here, give us a great smile while we're hope hopefully giving them one back. And that was the start of it. In January, wasn't it, Robin? 
it was in January and who knew it would lead to us this being, um, having a little spot, this little, little place on the internet where we can have people on that are good and kind and, um, man, what an honor and what, uh, you guys who are watching, you guys who watch after this, you know, boy, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Love, yeah, love and hugs to you all during this. And even, you know, the during this could go on a long time. You know, the, the, the coping part, it could go on a long time. And you guys keep it up. Keep, keep looking at your fellows and look at them in the eye and, and, you know, listen you know uh, listening is good um if if somebody's reaching out and and stuff listen to them uh offer them a leg up even if it's with your words um yeah, uh, yeah and your actions you know actions always speak louder than words to me i mean you can say anything but your actions tell the truth yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that old hack, you know, you know uh, walk on the talk. Uh, yeah, well, Kyle certainly does that. <laughs> uh, Yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> Kyle, dear, any anything further that you'd like to share? Sure. Um, <laughs> I know. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to tell you about some um, some actual real stuff that we're working on. Um, yes. I'm I'm going to post a link in in the youtube here and this is to a play called osceola that was written for my wife ah! uh, by john rosenberg and right before the the lockdown happened we were able to film it and um oh how cool yeah so we made i think a a very nice little movie about it with uh brian siano as the director of photography and it made me appreciate what, how much we rely on artists and how artists' lives have been changed so much by this because many of them, and certainly you know, um, actors like my wife, their job relies on groups of people getting together. And yeah. we can't do that in the same way. And I was, I was delighted that we were able to make this film uh, that we can share with people. And I'm, you know, we're all trying to, to think what, uh, what actors are gonna do and what artists are gonna do through this musicians certainly as well. So I appreciate you providing this platform and opportunity for artists to share their work with other people that, you know, work that can be experienced in the home, you know, while we are on lockdown. So I'm happy to be able to share that. Uh, uh, no kidding. There, uh, there are artists. I have a, a, a friend. Well, actually he, he's one of my children's friends. He's a Broadway actor and uh, they're doing uh, things on online. Uh, they're having hangouts and they're supporting each other. And, um, Bless them, bless them. Yeah, it's the artists right now who are, are suffering. In fact, our, our our guest next week is uh, another artist who cannot do her art. She cannot. Um, and so she's growing a garden. What are you guys doing? Are you guys gardening? Well, I know you have your projects online, but what are you doing? <laughs> so, you know, uh, luckily, I happen to be writing a cookbook right now well, you know, yeah, that, yeah and and incredibly luckily uh, a, a cookbook that i've already been paid to write so you know thanks to roswell um in many ways we have you know uh yeah you got that leeway we, yeah we have a, a you know a project that i have actually been paid to work on and time to work on it and I, if you don't mind, will share um, one or two of the uh, things from Cooking with Roswell. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, you guys click on those links. I'll also copy them 
and put them in the comments. So, you know, this is a, uh, this has my, features my wife as well and, and a yeah. lovely picture of Roswell and uh, talking about picnics, which is something that we have been doing lately. We are lucky enough to have a backyard. We live in a city, but we have a backyard um, and it's big enough for us to eat out there. And we've been spending a lot of time in the backyard and Trillian has yeah. been gardening in the backyard. Okay. And, and yeah. our cl clematis is in bloom. And if you ask her in the chat, she'll probably post pictures of her clematis in bloom if she can. Um, oh, oh, yeah. oh, shit. I'll have to. Make oh, don't worry about mine. it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> people, people can Google their own lovely clematises. Yeah. Um, Google. yeah. Don't, don't be lazy. Google that stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> Oh, and here's something that I would like to share with you, too. This is from Cooking with Roswell okay. and posting this in the chat right now. And this is the section on Roswell Day. And so there are pictures uh, just of her last year, of every day of her last year. Oh, um, oh OK. I'm, I'm opening a new tab and clicking on it. <laughs> <laughs> just so I can go look. Um, oh, look, you guys, <laughs> there she is. I remember almost all of that. I, oh, I, you know, at one, I had a tuxedo cat. Her name was Monroe. Uh -huh. And, uh, uh, my dear friend okay. died. She is. And I, uh, um, so she, relaxed. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, that's okay. But I had a tuxedo cat named Monroe. I, I have her picture on the side of my fridge. I made a magnet for her. Um, yeah. And I have, yeah, Monroe, Monroe. She used to have a twin sister named, um, Harlow and, um, Harlow passed away. And so then there was just Monroe. But yeah, I, I have this thing for uh, ginger tabbies and tuxedo cats. Look at that face. <laughs> isn't, she, isn't she just wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, that reminds me, I, I made a website several years ago called morningcatface.com because <laughs> Roswell would wake, <laughs> wake me up every morning just like that. Uh, you know, by sticking a claw up your nose, telling yeah. you it, it's time to start the day, and it. Yeah, yeah, you get up and blow your nose because it made your nose run. <laughs> yeah, go make breakfast. <laughs> yeah, and it kind of annoyed me at, uh, while she was doing it, but then, you know, when she got sick, I realized that um, it, it's the only way that a cat has to tell you that they want to be with you, and. Yeah. You know, so I learned a lot from her in her last year. And, you know, one was about um, the way that humans and animals have to communicate. And so you can go to morningcatface.com and post your own morning furry alarm clock pictures there and see other pictures. Oh, is that, oh that's great. You guys do that. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure Reemsy has morning cat face. Reemsy, you could post on there. Um, <laughs> I have gray on cat face. Does that help? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Okay, yeah. Uh, Reemsy says he gets up when Toby makes him get up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the one. We've been yeah. trying We've been trying to go running more um, just because the other option is to stay home and drink beer and, you know, eat Fig mm, Newtons yeah. and chips yeah. and salsa. And well, that's you know, pleasurable these days. <laughs> so we're lucky enough to have some nice places to run out here uh, that are not densely populated. So, yeah, we're... yeah and, and you're right. cool. I think it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> and Trillian's yeah. been very good about getting me out and doing it when I have zero interest in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I know our, our interests have kind of uh, gotten a little 
stale or something. But but yeah, yeah you being a long distance runner of how many medals do you have, Kyle? Uh, well, I'm actually they're mostly stored in the Rockstar Hotel, um, so there there are uh, sort of hanging yeah. obstacles here. <laughs> No, look, there's more. Like a, kind of a. Look at that. And then this this one looks like a disco ball. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, that that was, is so great. So, how many yeah. costumes have you worn? Oh, not that many. I know people who do it all the time. Uh, <laughs> but my wife and I did run in uh, Valley Forge which is uh, a place where General Washington had his uh, encampment during the Revolutionary War in 1776, 77. I can't remember how long he was at Valley Forge, but they have a five mile race there. And my wife and I ran that um, in costume. <laughs> I, w I was dressed as George Washington and she was wearing a 17th, 16th, 17th, 18th century ball gown. There we go. <laughs> I'll find a picture of that because she looks great. <laughs> you guys both looked great. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> that was You've got so many. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know, I mean, Maggie's clearly peeing herself. Yes. That's, <laughs> <laughs> This is lovely. At some point, you know, I think running another race gets a little boring and you're like, well, what can I do to make this more exciting? Yeah, Where are yeah. These I can understand that. There are good pictures of us. So if you just tell a distracting story while I Google. Uh, well, okay, no. so you go ahead and Google. And, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I, I have follow you at first when i titled this show maggie i said he's a marathon runner and he very quickly corrected me he says no that's a different thing i'm a <laughs> long distance runner i said well honey i i'm a i know jack about running <laughs> yeah, and, and i think he forgave me for that gaff i did uh, thank you. i think this show runs on gaffs don't you think <laughs> oh yeah that's the yeah, gaffs are us <laughs> Hashtag did, grannies. Hashtag grannies. Did you find it, Kyle? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, so we'll just keep nattering. I, I learned that word from Maggie. She calls it nattering. Um, when when we um uh, dish. Yeah. Uh, Av Avanata. <laughs> yeah. Avanata. Yeah. Cause I'm a natter. <laughs> yeah, you're a natter. <laughs> we'll work that one out. Which and, is and you say white, and I say white. Yeah. yeah oh, so my you know. got you good and proper last week. <laughs> oh, I know, cause I called it egg white. white. I kept saying I, it all afterwards. I oh, hate egg, I, because I hate egg white. So I emphasize the white oh, part, white. <laughs> and I got made fun of for going white. Because you know they're they're white, man. You know who I, my eggs need to so grow up. Quick. You know, it really is quick witted that lad. <laughs> oh, who, who uh, Michael are about to sign? Yeah, on that other channel. Yeah, okay. We're not talking about this here because this is Kyle's show. Yeah, no, sorry. I was just uh, we were just intervening. <laughs> yeah, we were just nattering while Kyle is googling. Are you done yet? I'm not done yet. So can you, can you tell me about your favorite Marmite re recipes? Oh, uh, uh, yes. Over to you, Maggie, because I think that shit is crap. Yeah. Go ahead. Nearly, nearly burnt toast, left cold, lashings of butter, and then barely any Marmite, just the taste of it. All right. <laughs> that must sound awful, but I love it. No, it sounds great. Oh, the smell of it. Best uh, butter. <laughs> Trisha's uh -huh. laughing. That's my daughter who's in the uh, chat because she knows it's true. <laughs> Marmite, boy, that's almost as disgusting as Nutella. No, Marmite is more disgusting. The smell of it can make you weep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so awful. 
I, I don't, but then I understand the Brits don't like our Hellman's or our best foods mayonnaise. They think that's gross. Are you they, joking? Hellman's is my favorite. Stick oh, a bit no. of Marmite in there. And you're oh. <laughs> What about, what about peanut butter? Do you eat peanut butter? Oh, yeah, I love peanut butter. Okay. Not with jam, though. I think that's vile. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because you eat Marmite. <laughs> you know, pe peanut butter and strawberry jam. Oh, baby. But I can't do it anymore because my doctor said, well, uh, you're reacting to peanuts. No wonder your bowels are in an uproar. So I had to give it up. Oh, my gosh. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that was T Y A F or whatever. It was. Oh, oh, T M I. Yeah, too much information. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, we've talked about bowel function before on our show, Maggie. I know. We've all got one. <laughs> we've all got one, you know. If you have a heartbeat, you've got a bowel. <laughs> Kyle? Yeah. I want to share some more pictures with you, actually. Okay. And is that okay? Sure. sure. Post, yeah, post yeah. Them up. All right. So these are also, I'm still looking for the, the, the racing pictures, but these are better. These are pictures from my wife's play, Osceola. Okay. And you can click on those. It's set in 1965 or 1966. God, I was I was uh, just Bye. graduated from high school back then. I was three. <laughs> yeah, that's why Maggie could be my daughter um, because I'm very old and she's almost oh. old. Here we go. I found the pictures from the the Revolutionary Run, and then I realized that this for everybody who is watching, still watching. Thank you for still watching. But I realize this is something we were talking about twenty minutes ago. Oh, uh, there's there's Trillian. Thanks, Maggie. I can't keep my hands straight. There you go. All right. So the racing pictures are up. Cool Jeez. beans. Thank you, Kyle. Oh, this <laughs> is great. This is great. <laughs> now um, it's Robin's turn to nearly wet to sell. <laughs> I, I know, isn't that this is the, the greatest chat <laughs> stuff we've ever had. Thanks, Kyle. You bet. Luckily, it was very cold. Oh, wow. well, not very cold, but it was chilly that day. Otherwise, we would have we would have been in dire straits, dressed like that. Um, yeah, there have been pictures of. Oh my God! Oh, look at that! If you can see it, folks, if I can keep me on still, isn't that great? <laughs> oh, I'm going to go be going through these later. I can't. Stupid <laughs> hands! Isn't that gr that is dang. They're amazing. That's nifty. I, I remember a couple of Photo shots. Photoshop, folks. This is real life photos. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know Reemsey says the Valley Forge photos are really beautiful. Yeah, Reemsey, hook up with Kyle. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Kyle Reemsey um, does reviews on his channel. He's been on YouTube for like you know, more than 10 years. And he does reviews of art and, uh, well, no, not so much art, but he does book reviews. And uh, he collects every single tarot card there is in the world. And he does funny oh. shit. So, so Reemsy, yeah, hook up with Kyle, dude. He's an artist. Look at Look that. Look at that. I, I know. I, well, that's amazing. <laughs> They really are. I, yeah. Oh. That was while we were goofing off, waiting to for the race to start. Goofing yeah. off. There are actually pictures of us running just like that. There, there are, and they're hysterical. Uh, you, you have so many pictures of you running. Uh, and <laughs> Here we go. Are you in shorts? <laughs> oh, he's in everything. Uh, you know, thank yeah. goodness you didn't um, default to that old uh, uh, dinosaur costume like many people have, or have, <laughs> or have you. Did you ever do a dinosaur costume? No, I never did. The oh, that's why I love you. 
Yeah, I think the right. best the best one that I ever did was uh, uh, the dude from the Big Lebowski. I yeah. ran a I ran a half marathon in a bathrobe carrying a half gallon of creamer. <laughs> was it really a creamer, and was it really a half gallon? It it was the it was the same one from the movie, but it was empty, and I tied it to my hand so that I wouldn't have to hold it. So it was actually tied to my fingers so that as I was gasping for breath and <laughs> yeah. about to die, I wouldn't also have to worry about holding on to oh, the no. container <laughs> of milk. Yeah, and when they carried you off in the stretcher, it was totally <laughs> it. <laughs> it was, that was kind of glorious, actually, because, you know, <laughs> running a race is basically just about, you know, how much suffering can you take? And when you're when you're in costume and no one else is a lot of times, <laughs> yeah. then you get a lot of comments from the, you know, a lot of people yell, go Lebowski. And so <laughs> that encouragement, um, you know, yeah. pause, <laughs> puts the, pa the pain on pause for a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've told stories about injuries to your feet and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Never ask a runner about their toes because they'll tell you and you don't want to know. <laughs> that you don't want to, and you don't want to see pictures for God's sake. Uh, yeah, I have a, a friend who's a long distance runner, and her manicurist who does her pedicures just is always in horror <laughs> about you. And uh, I also know a belly dancer, her feet are the same way. Um, because you're always twisting and turning on your feet, and you, you know, so her, her pedicurist is also a uh, uh, horrified. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even know why you would bother going to a pedicurist. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's about vanity. You know, ask ask Trillian; if she'll tell you. You know, you, you've got to have your toes done. And you you do learn about your muscles one at a time as you injure them. Yeah, I bet. So. Oh, and probably muscles you weren't even aware of. Oh yeah, before. I had no idea I had a soleus. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your soleus? It's on it's on your part of your calf. Really? Is that the part that cramps when you have a magnesium deficiency? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't uh, know either, and I work for a doctor. I've never heard of that muscle. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm, sure, I'm sure if uh, probably going down the stairs one time, I'll discover it because I'm an old woman. <laughs> And I'm this yeah. far from breaking a hip, so I'll yeah. probably discover that before. I discovered my meniscus. I heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh man, that's a rough one. Yeah, I discovered my tibia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Welcome to <laughs> Kyle's body. <laughs> it's like you weren't there before, but welcome. Yeah. It's like an unwanted guest moving in. Okay, you guys, we've been on for an hour. When I when I approached Kyle about this, I said, oh, you know, I was all, hey, would you want to come on my little show? And he, uh, I said, for 30 minutes? He says, 30 minutes? I says, yeah. And then he said, how long is the show? And I said, an hour. And so, Kyle, thank you. You're yeah, very thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I, but from the chat, from what I can see, they've loved you too. They really have. Uh, I would l love to leave everybody in the chat and you guys with uh, – a video of Trillian in Macbeth um, that you guys can watch later during the lockdown. And hopefully that art gives you all some joy. Thank oh, you so much for having me. Thank you so much. And thank you all for caring about Ronswell and caring about your neighbors. Um, I am at Kyle Cassidy on Instagram and Twitter and all of those other places. And if you follow along, you'll find out when Cooking with Roswell comes out. Thank and, you. And thank you, our artists who are yeah. keeping us vital and engaged and uh, maybe creative in our own way. You know, thank you to the artists. Um, I have such an appreciation. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Maggie, my, my co host. I'm, I'm signing out. Uh, gosh, I love everybody here. Thank you. Okay, goodbye. You all in the chat. Thanks for having me. Oh, I know it's nice being had, is it not? Okay, bye, Kyle. Bye. Thank you. Bye.
Oh dear. What a beautiful man. Wasn't this great? Wasn't yeah. this great? Okay, I'm, we're really signing off here, but oh, thank happy, you, everybody. Happy thank you so much. Happy Sunday. And I told you in private, Maggie. I said, okay, Kyle is a he, he knows public speaking. All we have to do is let loose the reins and turn him loose. And he was just beautiful. Um, the pictures. The videos he's left us to watch. What a, what a beautiful man. And isn't, his wife, Trillion Stars. Uh, isn't he lovely? Uh, um, yeah. Oh, God, we're gossiping and he's he can still hear us. <laughs> well, oh. that's all right. Everybody can. <laughs> we're still live. Oh, okay. Gosh. Okay, so I'm ending this because... Okay, everyone, everyone who tuned into this show, thank you very much for being here. You know, we have some good friends there who follow us, and we have a couple of new people. Thank you. Thank you, Trillion Stars. Uh, yes, thank, you. thank you to our friend in Norway who showed up. I don't know who you are, but you're very welcome. Planet Lupa, um, uh, Genocide Veronica May, Miss Tree. Um, Everybody, but yeah. you, there's too many to count this week. I think oh, you're I all brilliant. You're yeah. all brilliant. Everyone's brilliant. Okay, thank you again, Maggie. We'll talk soon. See you next week for our our next guest, Colette Miller. She is head of the Global Angel Wings Pro. Uh, oh, the Global Angel Wings Project. Project. Um, she's a local girl and I've, I've known her for a few years online and she has agreed to come on with us because, you know, she's on lockdown too and she's, you know, planting a garden, but she's going to come on and tell her story of the global angel wings project. Um, and I'm looking forward to that, but this show, oh, you guys, this show. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. You know, y'all tomorrow, happy birthday, darling. We all love you here. Thank okay. you. Wait, whose birthday tomorrow? Tomorrow, purple, sweet grass. That, that's right, Tamara. Um, happy birthday, darling. You're a good friend of the show. Okay, yeah. I'm ending this. I'm blathering on because I'm still all, all jacked up about Kyle. <laughs> okay. Okay. Take good care, night. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>